Hey, it's your guy Tyrell, back with the interviews. Brazil are heavy World Cup favorites, but they're in for a big task in their round of 16 clash against Mexico. Will they easily beat Mexico? If not, why will they struggle and how will they break that Mexican side down? Don't worry, here at the interviews, we've got you covered. So on this edition of the interviews, we're gonna break down three main talking points for Brazil against Mexico. Brazil, Brazil, Brazil. With Germany out, they are now the heavy favorites to win the World Cup. Can they deal with that pressure? Is this team ready to take Brazil back to the promised land? They have a big date with Mexico, a team that a lot of people thought in the group stage could win this tournament. Yes, they lost to Sweden in their final game, but they've impressed so far in this tournament, and this will present a great test to Brazil. When we think about three main talking points, the first one we have to discuss is Sometimes starting slow isn't that bad, but can this Brazil team get their attack going? We look at the attack, it seems like they're gonna stick with the same formation, which we'll get to in a bit as to whether they should or not, and the same personnel. Gabriel Jesus, Presses from the front, very energetic, creates space, hasn't been too bad with his back to goal. Willian didn't really play good in the first two games. Douglas Costa's injury, whether he's able to get fit or not, could determine whether he starts. But Willian looks to be a sure fit into this Brazil starting lineup. He holds the width on the right. You know he's always going to go right, but can he offer more? He's great in transition. That could be key here, but we need to see more from Willian. Then we get to Neymar, the third best player, arguably the third best player in the tournament, arguably the third best player in the world. Started the tournament slow, didn't really play competitive football for three months, building up to the tournament, now he's here. We think about Neymar, can he deliver? We know he can, he did it in the last World Cup, he's much better than four years ago, but now is when people start to assess you heavily. Can he do it once again? Can he relive the magic from 2014? He looked good in the Serbia game, but people are gonna demand goals. People are gonna demand efficiency around the box. And if Neymar can do that, then this Brazil team will probably get the job done because they're winning without him playing at his best. So if they can get him playing to his level, then the sky's the limit. Number two, we gotta talk about the midfield. So we got the midfield in Coutinho, Paulinho, and Casmiro. We think about it, Brazil lack a ball playing midfielder in that midfield. Someone to control the tempo of the game. Someone to really build attack. Someone to retain possession. You have Coutinho. He's done a good job. He's been probably one of their standout performers, one of the standout performers of the World Cup. He's scoring goals. He's being involved in goals. That is key. But when I talk about control, we didn't see control against Serbia. We didn't see control against Serbia until Fernandinho came in to kind of settle things down. We didn't really see much control against Costa Rica. We're talking about someone who could pass from wavelengths that can link play from midfield and attack. Coutinho, he's a very good passer from deep. He did create that goal for Paulinho. That is vintage Coutinho. He can score great goals, but he's not that guy. We think about Paulinho, likes to make surging runs forward. We saw that against Serbia as well. Can link play with his little nifty passes before he charges forward, but that's not control. We think about Casemiro, a lot of teams have marked him out of the game. Casemiro over the past few seasons has developed into a great all-rounder. He's a great defensive presence in front of that Brazilian back four that have been so good th this season. But can this Brazilian team really get the job done with that midfield not being able to control games? It's a big issue. They could create goals. They've done well so far. But as we go on in this tournament, they're going to be playing better teams with better midfields and this although this matchup does set up well for Brazil in terms of the personnel they can probably overpower Guardado, Guardado and Herrera you kind of feel like they need a calming presence in that midfield perhaps given Mexico's threat on the counterattack, we could see Fernandinho step in maybe drop Paulinho in that sense, play more of a 4-2-3-1, we're not too sure yet. That is an option for Brazil if they're worried of the Mexican counterattack, but the midfield choices are going to be key for Brazil in this game. They have very different, they're very flexible, they could bring in different players and that could be decisive. And then number three, 
no Marcelo. Will Marcelo play? Will he not? We're not too certain yet. Marcelo is integral to this Brazilian side in terms of getting forward down the left. We've seen some great combinations with him, Coutinho, and Neymar. He's arguably the best left back in the world. He can offer you creativity with his crosses. He likes to charge forward. When he left the game, we kind of saw more Neymar in isolation in 1v2s, 1v1s. The buildup was a bit slow. The counterpoint to that is the fact that Felipe Luis came in and they looked more defensively solid like I said this Brazil side can harm Mexico on the counter-attack they can get by those by the back four that hasn't looked too good and if they're defensively solid it ensures that perhaps Mexico doesn't hit them on the counter-attack so Marcelo could be needed here but perhaps it could be beneficial that he's not there this Brazilian defense looks great they arguably have the best center back in the competition they look good in defensive transitions they don't really get exploited like we've seen through Spain and Germany throughout the tournament and if Marcelo's there it's great but him missing this game given the counter-attack he's Mexico might not be so bad, but overall you want Marcelo. It gives you a bit of everything. So that is another key talking point for Brazil. Do they get a threat from left back? Do they get defensive solidity from Felipe Luiz? Who knows? But with Brazil playing Mexico, those are the three main talking points. But let me know what you guys think. Do you think Brazil is going to win this game convincingly? If not, what issues will arise? Who should start? Meet me in the comments below. Don't forget, I upload videos every day. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And that was your daily dose of the interviews.